pretty pretty good group. And if if folks continue to join, Anna will will continue to let them in. But um, before I introduce our our uh, dignified uh, guest uh, this evening, I, I want to, you know, I, I recognize all the faces, so I I, I don't see any new members. But I just want to make sure that they know that Lisa Deems and Anna and I are the, the three administrators for Jacksonville Urban Sketchers. So we're appreciative of everyone taking the time this evening, and, and uh, this is uh, this is going to be a fun fun little event. A uh, couple of things I do I know I have I, I see Laura uh, connecting as well. A couple of housekeeping items. If we can all just mute ourselves so we can limit the background uh, noise and, and, and background disturbances and that sort of thing, Anna is going to be facilitating whether she needs to mute me. I told her to please do so, uh, so we can, we can get on with it. But uh, I, I, I want to I make sure that, that uh, this stays interactive this evening as well. So I, I want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to ask questions. Some of us who who uh, who may be uh, more more familiar with Zoom, there's a raise hand um, uh, icon in the upper right. If you're an iPad, I think it's in the lower uh, section. You could raise your hand to ask a question. But I think uh, I think, ladies, and you guys tell me. I think we're going to have uh, a small enough group to where we can just holler out, just unmute yourself and, and holler out a question because Merrick loves the interaction. So if we could, uh, we could do that, but just be very cognizant of your mute button uh, if you're not speaking or asking a question. So I would, I would appreciate that as well. So with that, let me, uh, let me just welcome again, everyone to Jacksonville Urban Sketchers. And, and I can't thank uh, Lisa and Anna enough for, for really the work and dedication that they continue to put into our group. And we're, we're a new group and we're, we're trying to grow. We're trying to trying to uh, raise awareness to the value of observation and quick sketching techniques and that sort of thing. So, you know, it, it brings us to tonight's guest and, and I, I wanna just, I'm not gonna take a lot of words, uh, Merrick, but uh, just a, a, a minute or so. You know, I met Merrick back in Chicago at the uh, Urban Sketcher Symposium. I forget the year, I wanna say 17. Uh, and and I, I, that was my first uh, opportunity to, to attend a, an urban sketcher symposium. And I'm telling you, it was amazing. It was, it was like being in heaven because everyone had a singular focus and it was their ability to sketch and draw. And the love and passion that was uh, exhibited by everyone, all walks of life, just for drawing and drawing techniques was astounding. And I met Merrick in, a, in, in one of the workshops I took. And, and the first thing that, that obviously that, that attracted me to him, uh, other than his, his stunning good looks, was the fact that, you know, he was so willing, <laughs> he was so willing to share. He was so willing to share his knowledge. Uh, he was, number one, he's a talented architect. Uh, he's in Toronto now. I'll let him give a little bit of background on himself. But what I loved about him is he was willing to share his techniques and, and, and really the unselfishness within the urban sketcher community is one to be so proud of because all of the great sketchers and Merrick is really not only a national figure but an international figure within the urban sketcher community. So we're, we're tickled to have him here this evening. Uh, we, he and I have had the opportunity, I've, I've been honored to, to, to do a couple of Instagram live sketch, sketch alongs with him. He's, he's awesome, he's got an awesome technique He's got uh, an awesome eye. And uh, again, I will shut up because I want to introduce uh, Merrick uh, Badzinski uh, and, and uh, let him take the show. And look, it's a, it's a sketch along. Uh, he'll, he'll, uh, it's his show. It's a sketch along, draw along, whatever. Feel free to ask questions. He likes interaction. And Merrick, we absolutely thank you for, for taking the time with us tonight. And we absolutely uh, look forward to uh, to seeing your your work tonight as well. So Merrick, all yours, bud. Thank you, thank you, Chris. Thank you for the intro. Thank you for inviting me to the Jacksonville chapter. It's uh, wonderful and it's great, guys, here that you're putting this together because it's uh, just yet another option here for the arts-minded people to to do something, especially now, you know, with COVID. 
Uh, anyway, um, my name is Marek. I am Polish, if you haven't uh, discovered that from my accent yet. Usually it takes no more than two minutes for someone, or sometimes two seconds to say, are you Polish? Yeah, I am. So I live in Toronto, Canada now, but uh, I will never lose my accent and that's about it. Hopefully you can understand what I'm saying and if not, just uh, tell me to slow down and then I will try to pronounce things more accurately. <laughs> Having said so, um, I, uh, I guess I speak fast. I like to sketch fast too, but it's not the speed that is important here. I just wanted to highlight a couple of things that the uh, we do in the urban sketching rather commonly. It's not a unique treat that I have or, or someone else does. It's, as I would say it's a common thing that, that the urban sketchers share um, if they wish to, of course. And uh, one of those things is uh, the ability to, to do quick, quick sketching. And that's really uh, something that uh, comes sort of from the on location. You know, you are somewhere, something strikes you, you have a, a pen or a pencil or something in your hand and uh, you end up um, doing a little sketch if you have a notebook or sometimes you don't have a notebook uh, but you can find a piece of paper and uh, and sketch on that there's speaking of that there's one guy who sketches on the inside of the cereal boxes you know the the, the, the box of cereals like kellogg's and that stuff he opens them up and uses the inside the craft color of the inside, which has no print, as uh, as his base for his uh, for his sketches. But that's just a I'm, I deviate from our uh, plan for the day. So I have I have a bunch of things that I wanted to show you today, and those are my own sketches that I do sort of you now doodles. That's what I call them really. They are just small little drawings done, usually in ink because that's what I like. I like pen and ink. That's my primary thing. And those things are done um, at various times. Um, sometimes, you know, while I'm on the phone, sometimes while I'm in a very boring office meeting. Um, and I just end up uh, drawing those things um, pretty much, you know, often out of imagination because I don't necessarily see something. So I'm an architect, as you can tell, because pretty much everything here, it's uh, almost everything here is buildings. So that's what sort of fascinates me, but you can draw anything you want. Uh, another thing I often draw is I draw little people. They have you know, different uh, examples of that, where they were drawn here, different sets of people, uh, people sketches, all done with ink in a quick way without spending too much time, without being too accurate is just that. It's a, just a pile of drawings here that they have um, all done quickly. And I think the concept here is that you just draw a lot and that's when you notice that you end up getting better. And you're certainly not uh, or less hesitant later on when it comes to a large piece. Um, that's m my <laughs> recipe, if I can call it that way, is to try to sketch every day. I, I, I don't maybe I don't do a real big art piece, but I will doodle every single day. I'll find time to do that. And it's like here yeah, this this one here is done on a on a on a napkin from from the airplane. I, you know, I was just saying that I, I was flying somewhere and uh, so it's done on, on a napkin. And it, I guess I had no other paper, so I doodled on that. And it's just uh, one, my recipe for keeping myself occupied and busy and uh, having wow. a different approach to the daily time, right? The daily tasks, because this, this, this activity gives me happiness. That's probably the reason I, where, where I, why I sketch. Uh, I just like doing it. So uh, there is no other reason that uh, I stick with the urban sketches other than the, the, than they are good looking folks like Chris, of course. And, uh, <laughs> and other than that, it's just, uh, you know, it's just a, a great activity to be in. So that's what I like to, to talk to you about here today. So let's do a quick sketch here because there's plenty of them here and, and no sense showing you all of my, the pile of mine. Um, and uh, it's, I'll, I'll just, Put it away and I'll just take out a, a pad. This is some notes from 
a live I had and another sketch I did uh, while talking to a, a, a lady about fountain pens. We were doing this uh, live and, and this is just pure imagination sketching. There is nothing of, of truth in here, but I just wanted to show you quickly how, how I do my drawings using a fountain pen. And, uh, and they come out more or less like that. Why do I use fountain pens? Well, uh, they are very portable. Um, they are much faster to use than dip pens when you're talking about ink. You don't have to go back and forth here into your inkwell all the time to, to, to dip it. Uh, some of them have large ink capacities, so you can load them up and use them for an entire week or more. And I like ink, so that's my priority. You might like something else, you know, you might like some other, you might like pencils or, or ballpoint pens or anything. It's, it's, it's just a personal preference. I have a couple of options here in the fountain pens. This is just a normal Twisby fountain pen that uh, nothing special, but you know, $30 pen. And uh, uh, when I doodle, doodle with that, I, I really find that um, I can, the best doodles I do when, it's a, a, when my mind is occupied with something else. As if now really, because I'm just talking to you and hopefully we'll have a conversation and you guys hopefully will have some questions or anything like that that you will want to ask me. So please feel free to do that because uh, um, this session is supposed to be for you to find out. Uh, I mean, so you can find out maybe what interests you. And I don't really know much about uh, what the Urban Sketchers Jacksonville currently does. Uh, so I'll try to, I'm shooting in the dark in a way, you know, and uh, that's really my, my plan. You so have a question? I started, yeah, okay. Yeah, there was, there was a question. Go ahead, Anna. Yes, what brand and pen and ink are you using? Okay. So, so the, the pen that I'm using now, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a Twisby. It's a Twisby, which is a Taiwanese company. And uh, the particular model is called Eco, but they have other, other models as well. And this is uh, somewhere around $25, something like that. I'm not sure, more or less. Um, pretty available um, for urban sketching. Um, I like I like my pens to be thicker. I like the ink line to be juicy. So that's my priority, my preference. So my nib that I have, it's a B, bold type of a nib, which gives me a thicker line. Of course, you could have a medium or you could have a fine, and there are other options as well available. And then there's other companies, but uh, this is a pretty common, uh, rather available type of a fountain pen. Uh, that many many in the urban sketching communities are using. Nothing really special about that. Um, another common um, brand it's called is by Lamy. It's a German company. Twisby is a Taiwanese company. Lamy or oh, Lamy? It's not Lama. It's Lamy, L A M Y, and they make a pen called Safari in many many colors. And it's pretty much similar, you know, in a way that it works. Uh, also has different nib sizes. It costs somewhere there, I don't know, $30, somewhere there. And you have a different choices of colors. And you buy one of those and you buy in, uh, additional ink for it that comes in a bottle. And you're good for, I don't know, a year, five years, forever, pretty much. So that's uh, that's just my my my. my Preference. I like I like ink. I don't like to to doodle with um, with pencil. I mean, I do the pencil, but uh, with pencil, there's always the concern that you might decide to erase something. So I don't think that uh, I have used an eraser much in the last uh, you know year at all. If I just make a mistake on my ink doodles, I just live with it, and uh, that's mm -hmm. about that. That's uh, you got to. Um, Tell yourself, yeah, Eric, okay, you well, I made a mistake. You can. Yeah, a question came up related to the, the paper you prefer. Okay, well, in this case here, um, I, this is a Rodia pad and uh, it just happens to be smooth paper. But, so that's why I'm using it today. I, I, and this, this particular paper has those dots. I don't know if they are visible, 
if I bring, li lift it to the camera, I can probably see it. But it's called a dot pad and it has mm. dots every few millimeters. There is a bunch of dots. Maybe I'll highlight them here on the side. It is a dot, 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 dot. They are very faint and they are rows of dots. Uh, and it just happens that this pad has the dots. I actually don't use them for drawing at all. Um, it, I just bought it like that. Um, I, I use the dots when I'm writing uh, in the same pad, then I use the dots because they give me um, guidelines, horizontal guidelines, and also a vertical guideline. Um, so for writing calligraphy, stuff like that, you can, you, you can use it. But any paper for me works fine. Myself, I have a preference to, to draw on a watercolor paper, and we will do that soon too, okay? We'll do have a quick sketch on a watercolor paper because then you can do other things with watercolor paper that you cannot do with this type of paper. This is very good. This is top quality. I mean, the Rodia company is not a cheap you know, company, but for doodling, find a bunch of paper that uh, you, know, you would use for photocopying and that works as well as anything else. Uh, there's really no need for uh, doing uh, anything more than that. It's just uh, any type of uh, normal paper sh should, should do for your normal daily doodling if, if that's what you wanna do. Okay. You know, one of the so things, Eric, hey, Mary, I'm just, this, is, this is Chris, yeah, sorry. One ahead, of the Chris. things that's very noticeable, obviously, you know, your lines are so, uh, so definitive. There, there's, there's, uh, there's a lot of, there's quickness, there's uh, define, you, you define your line quickly. There's a lot of confidence in your stroke. You know, a lot of people have a tendency to kind of feather their lines and so forth. It's, you know, that's that's a great thing about well, your style. I guess you, it, it, you're, so quick. you're absolutely right. Yeah, you, you've got to be, be able to uh, take the bull by the horns, really. And that's what I think what I'm doing here in this particular case. I'm just trying to build something up and I'm thinking more about the composition. Uh, more than anything else. And I'm really thinking of this in, in terms of tonal value. I have some areas of, uh, of white, oh, well, lots of it still. I have some areas of gray. And then where will I have the areas of black? Because really in this particular, with this particular technique, you can't really have much more than maybe one or two intermediate grays, right? Uh, and so it's, uh, it's really white, black, or one or two gray, and that's about it. So you've got to make your decisions uh, while you are drawing. And often I don't really think about it much. I just let my hand go for it and something comes out. Uh, so and the, at the end of the day, I'll try to pull it towards, um, when it starts looking like something, well, this obviously it's going to be some kind of, a, some set of houses or something like that. We started with this, I don't know what it would be, a church tower and uh, uh, that there's some housing here going around with some chimneys. Uh, and that's very typical of the, the many drawings I do. Um, I lived in places where um, structures like that um, are very prevalent. I lived in, in you know, the, the old towns of Poland a little, a li look a little bit like that. I also lived in Italy. So uh, a lot of the Italian small towns, the Borghi, they are looking very much so like this sketch. Uh, so perhaps that's sort of engraved in me and that's what I like to represent. But it's really just a, a quick sketch to, to try to capture something because that's what my preference is. I want to capture um, the space and I want to cap capture the movement and the feel of, uh, of that particular area if I can. And sometimes I can, sometimes I cannot. Well, then too bad. You just, you know, failure is something that we got to deal with, but it's, uh, it's not a big deal. It's just an, a sketch. And uh, it, I'm really, I'm doing it for myself again. I'm doing it because the whole process of sketching or drawing or painting makes me happy. And uh, that's why I keep doing it. There's no other reason to it than that. Well, there's no no money in urban sketching anyway, so like <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're not here because of that. 
you know, being an architect, right. obviously you're, you're motivated with, with architecture and beautiful buildings. And, and obviously you've been from wonderful towns that, that really exude uh, architectural uh, beauty. So that, that's a wonderful opportunity for inspiration as well. And I know during these times, it's pretty much to get inspired. A lot of us are, are stuck at home or because of, of the pandemic and we, we try to get ourselves inspired. But, you know, for you to just take off on a piece of paper like this, you know, that's it's pretty marvelous to just see what, what appears. Well, it just can be done, right? It's a, that's the whole point here is uh, throw options at, uh, at your members of things that they could be doing. And it doesn't have to be with a fountain pen. It could be with a ballpoint pen or, or a different type of, uh, I have other fountain pens that I like more than this one here. And uh, some of them, this is another one uh, of the fountain pens I have. This gives me a much thicker line and it's actually mm. very wet as well when it works. And uh, I just need to give it a little bit of, uh, of time so it primes itself. But uh, the, this is a called, so-called bent nib food type of a fountain pen. That is something that uh, really works for me quite well. So I like that and it's, uh, it, it gives you decisive strokes. And you can see that the amount of black that uh, ends up uh, putting, being put down on paper increases just because this, this particular fountain pen is sort of like wetter, you know, it just will, will, put, will put down much more ink to paper much quicker. And quickness is good in my opinion. I think I like those things because they are fast, right? You can go yes. more extreme and uh, turn to another, yet another fountain pen, which used to be a, a parallel pen. And this is like for calligraphy. It's, a, it's another $30 or $20, well, probably $20 um, pen by Pilot, which is made for calligraphy. And uh, I just use this for drawing. And uh, this pen has uh, the characteristic that it will give you a thin line when you're dragging it down in sort of vertical mode, like in here. But if I move my hand horizontally, then it gives me a thicker line or an even a very thick line as well from the same, same nib. That's because of the, of the way that uh, this particular pen has been modified, it's just a simple cut. But uh, it's no different than using a big marker that has, a, the, was it called chisel? Um, chisel point. Chisel nib marker. Mm -hmm. Chisel point. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So a, ch a chisel point. That's how it works. Same way. It, and and you can you can draw with that too, right? I can just go on here and uh, and continue and just put down more ink to this, and uh, and now I can start deciding where do I really want to have some real black because this thing it's like a fire hose, right? It will it will <laughs> pump down so much ink that uh, you can start deciding, okay, here you can do things um, in, a, in a different fashion. And uh, we're just bringing, there, we're just bringing this. Great. Okay, can you see this guys? Uh, yeah. Could you put it, put it closer to the camera so we can appreciate okay, the I'll, lines, please, yeah, I'll, thank you. Uh, okay. I also have some bigger pieces, so I mounted the camera a little bit higher up. So let me see here. I don't know if the, the lighting is, is good enough here. Yes. But that's how, that's how the, the sketch really is at the moment. Those are the, the line, the ink lines from the parallel pen by Pilot, uh, which is not something that I'm suggesting that you have to go and buy. No, it's just one of the many tools that you can use. You can use a, a pencil or anything else that you like. It's your it's your call. It's just yeah. it's just a doodle. It took us only a few minutes to have this done and uh, it exists. Yes. Yeah. Hey, Mary, this is Chris again, obviously. <laughs> uh, you know, what's great is our, our group is made up of uh, a, a number of different types of artists, uh, different artists, uh, wonderful artists, oil mm -hmm. painters, watercolor, uh, gouache, uh, pastels, and you know, the ink line, it's so difficult to build up tone and you have to cross hatch and, 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 and just continue to layer and that sort of thing. It's so different than one quick stroke with a brush. So this is wonderful to see how you use your pens 
as you, to maximize your ability to build up the stroke and to you know increase the density and the shadow patterns and that sort of thing. And that's a beautiful thing about urban sketching. You know, to sketch with a pen, and Patrick, you know that, you and I have been talking about that. You know, you sketch with a pen and just be uh, confident and just put the line down. Don't worry about if it's the wrong line or whatever. It'll build up and that's part of the character of the sketch. And even that little doodle you just did now, it's, it's beautiful just to see the level of uh, differences in tone and, and stroke. And, and uh, uh, it's a great, great example. Well, thank you. I, I'm glad, glad that it's uh, it's working out here. Let's move on to something else then, because enough of this ink stuff here, at least on this paper. Let's move on to a different... Uh, you mentioned watercolors. Um, so I have a pile of things that I want to, 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 to really to show, because I don't know what the, your membership is interested in primarily. So it's really difficult for me to, to go through. But uh, I just have some watercolors that uh, those were done with ink and then a watercolor wash on top of it. And there will be more here in this. Uh, there's a black and white mm. that I haven't uh, colored yet uh, from a place in, uh, in Toronto. Uh, this is in vertical, so I'll pass on the vertical. Uh, some houses, these drawings are done on location. Like almost all of my drawings, except the doodles, are done on location. I get inspired by drawing outside. That works for me. And uh, I really have zero problems with going outside. Well, now it's a COVID thing, so that throws in a little bit of a difficulty. But I never had um, any issues uh, with uh, with myself sketching outside and uh, you know being in public effectively. Of course, you've got to respect you know the privacy of people and things like that. But as long as you're on a public sidewalk, uh, you can do whatever you're doing. And all of these sketches here, as you're seeing them, um, they were they were done. Uh, well, this one was actually alive. So this is from Edinburgh, uh, something that sketched uh, together with a guy uh, from Malaysia, actually. He's Malaysian, yeah. I'm, I'm in Canada, and we, together, we sketched this based on a picture. I should uh, Yeah, that's marvelous. That's marvelous. So it's, it, it, this is, this is um, uh, an example of, uh, this work was done in, uh, I don't know, an hour and 15 minutes or something like that. And you can see it is all on on Instagram, from this from line one to the last one, everything was there. We were just uh, meeting and chatting and uh, painting live from the same picture. Uh, do that often. Some drawings on location. Um, oh, Chris, you recognize this one? This <laughs> what? This is a yeah yeah. That this was, is a live a we had with Chris. Yeah, the red barn yeah, that, that, that uh, we painted together. You know, what was fun about that Go one, ahead. Merrick, is, you know, obviously I always lean toward watercolor, but, you know, to watch you create it so quickly, I, I, I did a quick outline in pencil and then I started the watercolor wash, but you dove right in with the pen. And it's, uh, it was fun to see the, the difference in styles. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, this example here, it's painted or sketched really from uh, a car. Uh, it's cold in Canada now, so the winter time, I just go around, find a parking spot or a location that I can see something from the car. This particular gate was right in front of uh, um, somewhere where I was able to sneak in. I was probably parked illegally, but I was sitting inside in the car anyway. So if uh, if a cop comes, the the worst thing scenario is they would tell me to just move, and uh, nothing like that ever happened. So I guess I got lucky, uh, you know. Uh, this is another life with another uh, architect from Toronto. Uh, this is his hometown Sarajevo, in the former Yugoslavia, and we just painted this based on. Uh, on a picture he found. So I do a lot of those lives here because I cannot get outside. Um, so I do that based on the pictures that uh, somebody provides or we find a picture on the internet or something's a picture I've taken or they've taken. It's all great. It's just an inspiration. At the end of the day, I'm just happy to uh, produce something. And that is my happiness level increases every single time that I can complete a drawing and that's just how, how, how things go for me at least you might uh, hear another yeah, there, another set of uh, hey, hey, Mary, drawings yeah go ahead Mary, there was a, there was a comment about how uh, 
it's great how you include figures, human and canine. <laughs> he said they really add a lot to the scenes. So. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, that, that's, uh, thank you. That's, uh, uh, yeah, I like to do that. Uh, we can just do some doodles of people as well because that's the other type of doodles we can really quickly do. Um, some more sketches again, this is winter time, okay, there's snow here on the, on the ground. And I just found those, uh, those things, you know, parked somewhere. So uh, yeah, there's plenty of options here for, for sketching um, and doing drawings. And uh, so those are, those were sort of like my, I like to work large. So let me show you here um, the larger pieces that I ended up doing. And uh, they are big. So that's why I mounted my camera sort of higher up. And uh, a lot of them are in uh, some kind of a plastic here. So I'll just, I'll just keep throwing them on here. So hopefully you can see them without too much glare. Mm -hmm. And there is, uh, all of that is in Toronto. Um, just, just you know, Toronto. Well, this one is Ottawa. Uh, so I, when I travel around, I try to look for something that uh, interests me, and I do those drawings. These particular sketches are um, on a piece of paper that's one foot by two feet, by one by two. So that's uh, they are relatively large. Okay, most of them are horizontal, or I think I'll be only showing up horizontals because it doesn't make sense to show anything else. Uh, and uh, they are in a kind of a protective sleeve here, that uh, so you may see more glare on these on these drawings. Some of them are watercolors. Some of them are just uh, graphite, so, which is a gray technique, similar to just using a monotone. Um, wash of uh, neutral tint or a black color from watercolor. I just used uh, a stick of graphite. We'll probably go through that uh, quickly in a moment. Uh, so this is, uh, this is my preferred size at the moment. I like to work large, but then again, that's me. If, if you like to doodle in a small sketchbook, perfectly fine. You just do whatever, as long as you draw, uh, because I think that drawing makes me happy. So I'm really hoping that uh, by watching this tonight, you might get inspired and uh, you will draw more and that will make you happy in turn because that's really all it's about. Absolutely. Merrick, if I could, let me take a minute and just see if, if anyone else has a question that just would like to holler out if you want to unmute yourself and ask Merrick a question at this point. Uh, from what you've heard or seen or have any any uh, any questions about what he uses and that sort of thing. Anybody? Well, Merrick, you must be doing a phenomenal job of explaining yourself because you're just answering all the no. questions. As you no, I, I think that they simply cannot understand my Polish accent, you know, and that's what it is. Uh, I just keep Abby. going on. I have a question. I see. Abby's got a hand out. Go ahead, Abby. Um, I'm very intrigued by how well you use um, negative space, even when it may be a solid object, say for your trees, just so it's not quite so even mid tone. Is there a particular formula you kind of say, hey, I'm just going to leave this soft, other than the outsides where I, I see you sometimes going to a fade? But I've seen you use your, your trees very effectively, even though it might be a solid. Thing, you, you'll let it just go neutral or very light, yeah. So this is the example of what we're talking about here, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. The, or these the lamppost, okay, well, the lamppost is white. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's right, yeah. So it's, uh, I, I cannot say that I have a particular, you know, formula for that. Um, the, this set of, uh, of, of sketches, I mean, I sketch everything in ink and I guess when I am sketching it in ink, I just look at it and I sort of decide what is the tonal value of a particular item. I just decide, you know, the, the most important key elements, what are they going to be? And uh, this, uh, this one here is, uh, is painted with just the two very common you know, uh, ultra, French ultramarine and the burnt sienna, which as you very well know, you guys are painters, gives some kind of a gray depending on how you mix it. And those are the only two uh, paints, pigments used in here. I use it quite often, actually, they are, they are still on my desk, you know, because I was doing something else. So yeah, this is the, the two watercolors I used. This entire, this entire 
painting or drawing or sketch. It's done with a, a fountain pen that used ink and, uh, and these two watercolor pigments and nothing else. I don't think I used any white. I just left some of the white here. I reserved it. So I guess my thought process here is uh, I decide what's gonna be, I, I, I try to look at the values primarily more than at the colors. Obviously the, the sky is gonna be blue rather than, than burned sienna. But other than that, everything else, it's really up for interpretation in my opinion. And I'm concentrating much more on the values of uh, what I see than on the actual colors themselves. So a lot of those buildings here, like almost none of them were this particular color. And like none of it is true. They were whatever other colors that they were. The, the church was sort of brownish because it's made out of, um, of uh, brick. So that's the only thing I can remember. And, and this side here, the, the side on the, the, the right side here, obviously is in the shadows. So while it is very bluish, it's pr primarily dark. So it's just a value play. And here you can see there's a reserved area for um, a street light with a pole. And it's, uh, it has, a, it has a, a maximum 40. That's kilometers, by the way, not miles. 40 kilometers an hour you know, the speed on this particular street. This is in Toronto, one of the streets uh, uh, where there is a mix of all the new that I was talking about with Lisa earlier. We have the old stuff here, and then there's the new towers that are coming up. And some of them are actually quite pleasant. They are well done. So I'm quite, well, I was quite happy here with this particular location. But uh, I think I have other ones. Oh, here, another, another example. And again, oh, that's great. this, this this addresses the same question that you may have had here before. Like I left the, the landscaping well white, you know, I, even though Chris will tell me as a landscape architect that this stuff should be green, <laughs> but I don't, I don't have a green paint. So that's my excuse, right? And where, the, where are the palm and, trees? That, that's my only question. Where are the palm trees? Yeah, well, there aren't, aren't any palm trees in Toronto, believe me, okay? So it's, uh, uh, but, but that's, again, it's the same story here. And um, uh, how it was painted, well, um, I think with the darker values for everything in the background, because the skyline is very pronounced here, with the darker values of everything ca coming down towards the mm -hmm. moment where it hits the, the tree, the crown of the tree, then that value has to change. Uh, and that's how I left them white. And I just gave them a little bit of color here on one side. So they would start getting a little bit of a roundness to themselves. But I, as you can tell, I didn't even you know, decide which particular color of the shadow is it gonna be. So some of them have some brown spots, some of them have some blue spots, uh, but at the end of the day, it's the value that works. And you guys mm -hmm. know that as painters, that it's the, you know, the value is the one that does the, the job, but it never gets the credit. And in this particular case, um, I just, uh, I just don't, I only have two, two, two pigments that I'm uh, uh, concentrating on. I limit myself to that because if I use more than that, I end up getting, you know, confused. That's pretty much the story. So I'm not sure if I answered the question, but if you have a follow-up question, I'm quite, quite happy to answer that. I, I've got one little question. <laughs> They're Go beautiful. Ahead. They are absolutely beautiful. Um, how, now, do you uh, buy sheets of paper or do you buy like um, a watercolor block? How do you get them to that size, the 12 by 24? Well, okay, so this particular one, I got it on the equivalent of your Craigslist um, here. And I found someone who was selling a whole lot of, uh, of large, uh, a very large size of watercolor paper. I le later learned it's called elephant size, which is like humongously big because I can cut 10 of these out of uh, one sheet. Right. So it, it came, it was very, very large. And I just laboriously cut every single one of them to that. But I'm, I'm okay with the, with the pads. Um, I think I have some here. Well, I showed you that, you know, this is a, an 
well, it's a European one, so it's an A3. Um, but uh, it's more or less an 11 by 17, right? So that's a, that's a large size as well. If you want something smaller, uh, then there's the typical size here for North America, nine by 12 watercolor, watercolor pad. Um, this is from a, my local supplier of, of paper. I think it's their own brand. I tend to use um, the, um, the less costly option if there is one, because I sketch a lot. So if I was to use the 600 uh, uh, grams or what is it, whatever is uh, 320 pounds arch, arches paper every single time, I would burn through, through my, my bank account in no time whatsoever. So I tend to sketch on cheap stuff. Okay. Good, good, good question, Laurie. Good question. Anybody else have any questions? Well, Merrick said it. Yeah, I have one more question. Do you mount that now before you draw on them? I mean, how do you go about keeping it flat like this while you're painting and drawing on it? I do absolutely nothing with, with, the, with, the, with the paper. I don't stretch it. I don't bother with that. I find it's uh, a lot of it. It's, uh, it's just uh, adds up to, I, I'm trying to cut away all the preparation time that uh, that um, people often tell that it's a prerequisite for sketching. To me, it's not. So if I, if I just put this away and I'll, I'll go to a site, I will have a pad of paper here like that, a fountain pen and my chair. And that's about it. If I'm going with my larger pieces, I have them in a sort of like a folder. So, uh, when I when I simply sit on my on my little stool, I can put it across my lap, and uh, that the, the becomes my support for sketching. But that's really all I want to do. It's just sketch. Yeah, yeah. Phyllis, so, you had a question. Yes, when you uh, are doing your drawing and you're sketching, are you putting in some of your darker values with your pen before you actually paint, or are you basically? sketching an outline and then putting in all your values with the watercolor? No, I put them in with, uh, with uh, both uh, uh, ink or sometimes if I use pencil, sometimes I will use pencil instead of ink, then I, um, I put the values in, especially for the darkest darks, yeah. I will put them in because I want my black and white sketch to sort of resemble what, uh, what it is right away. And if you know that you're going to go 100% dark or really close to like really dark, then why not put it in right away? Um, we can do that. Let's do that. I have this, uh, this, this is a print of um, Tower in Prague. It's called Powder uh, Tower. I did a live uh, um, recently with, with uh, about this. So actually I'll keep it here in, the, in your view so you can have a look at that. And uh, so um, we've drawn this together with a guy from Australia. And uh, he picked this, uh, this view. I've never been to Prague, so this is new to me. Uh, and, um, and I like the, 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 the photo. So I figured, yeah, let's, let's, let's do a drawing together. And uh, we just decided, OK, let's, uh, let's get together and sketch something together. So um, I'm just trying to recreate. The, I'll do a, a really quick uh, version of uh, what you're looking at here by um, just on using watercolor paper so we can do something else with it uh, later as well okay and uh, and i can see that i've screwed up a little bit already but hey I, you know i'll have to live to it and then <laughs> you are there's some fudging yeah there's some fudging coming up okay here so i uh, don't uh, you know try to look the other way for a moment okay but uh, yeah I'll try to, to cover up my, my tracks if I can. And I'm just doing a quick sketch in the ink because I'm simply, I'm too lazy to go to pencil. If I go to pencil, then I'll spend too much time on pencil. Then I'll have to go and ink it again. And I find that it loses the, um, the sort of, you know, the spontaneity that, uh, that ink sketching gives to me. That's, that's my, probably the, the, the thing I prefer the most. Is just uh, having um, 
something that looks uh, uh, not labored. That's uh, that's my my goal here. So I'm trying to figure out how those things really are because there's a bunch of arches here going across and uh, that might be a little bit, oh, okay, there's five of them. So I can just do that. Really, I'm trying to replicate the, 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 the darks and the lights and hopefully that will work out. And then we'll do some, uh, some graphite value sketch on top of it and uh, or watercolor or anything else. And that should work out. That'll be a quick sketch. But here's the answer to your question that you had earlier, if I do put values in, absolutely. And uh, let's do that. I can just go on here and, uh, because I know that this particular side of my tower is going to be much darker than anything else. There's a protrusion here on the left side as well. So I will uh, generate the same thing here on this side. Actually, probably for quickness, I'm gonna go with a larger pen because this is the fine one. So I'll go with uh, the, the bent nib Fude, uh, which is gonna be giving me a faster version of what we want. And I'll try to include also some people. I love the fact that we can represent faults and whatever is happening here at the at the ground level of anything there's so much things so many things happening there's street signs there is uh, garbage bins there is lights there is uh, trees uh, whatever else you might have advertising signs um, all of that is available uh, to see in a normal sketch and if you don't if you know, in normal life sorry it's it's there, and if you end up not including it, then to me the the sketch might look a little bit bare. So I'm trying to uh, this. I think this pen is obviously start starting to run out of ink. I might have to re-ink it quickly, or just use another one. Let's see. So. Yeah, I'm trying to get this to a point where I could say, okay, it's good enough so I can start doing a value drawing uh, using um, water soluble graphite, which is a technique that, uh, that I like. Now there's nothing special about the water soluble graphite. It's just, a, it's works same way as, uh, as a watercolor from uh, a stick or a watercolor from a pan. Um, it's just uh, using one, one tone only, uh, you can just represent the values and capture them quite well. So we're not talking about individual colors of elements, just we're talking about the, the only uh, grayness of everything. Okay, so I'm getting down to the bottom line to, to, the, to the level where more things happen. There's some umbrellas here to the left. I'm definitely going to, to keep them in. So I'll put in some umbrellas. I'll put in some more folks, some people. Someone asked for a dog, so we'll put in a dog in here <laughs> and we'll see how, how that works out. Well, sometimes it doesn't look like a dog, okay? But uh, it's, uh, it's a quick sketch, so hopefully. I'm just try I'm trying to do, you know, whatever I can here. It's, uh, it's uh, all right, a small person, big person, and a couple of umbrellas here in the back, uh, just so we have, you know, things viewing, and then I can go on. And yeah, I, at this point, I would definitely try to have uh, some values locked in. And why not do them right away with my pen? Yeah, this pen is better than the previous one, just because the previous one was too 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 fine for me. But again, you know, pens are like are like ice cream. Whatever I like, you might absolutely hate. So, and here we go with our, here we go with our trees here. No palm trees, but there's and the, some trees here at the bottom. I definitely will have the bottom of the tree to be very dark and maybe a tree trunk, something like that. And then a few other folks around here, maybe some other umbrellas. And I'm, I'm making things up, you know, I could actually have a, a car 
but you know it's I probably would add a car because they it 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 makes the the, the scene even more lively. But it's uh, uh, no room for it. I didn't really think about that, so it's just going to be a street, a couple of curbs, something like that, a couple of posts of, of something, maybe a street light. There you go. So we have a quick sketch that's done. And this seems to be way too dark now, if I look at it. It's just, uh, I've got to counterbalance uh, the, the left side with, uh, with more focal blackness in the center of the attention, which is just this, this, this tower. This tower has a gate, it's a, it's a true gate. You can drive through it, you can walk through it. There's two of those gates in here. Um, the one next to each other, I, I guess they were they were built at different times, obviously. But as you can see, this sketch here doesn't have much detail at all. It's more of a, an indication of a detail. I'm just trying to fudge it and, uh, and make it appear that I actually captured something. The whole point of this exercise for me today it's uh, to do something quick and in a way careless. That's what I'm trying to show. It can be done it, and it can work. It's uh, obviously, I probably have uh, some experience with this particular uh, image because uh, I've, I've done this uh, live session with the other guy, but that was my very first time that I drew it. And uh, this is my very second time that I'm drawing it because I haven't, practice anything in between. Okay, good enough? Oh. So let's yeah, go now. Merrick, to, I, I, let, Merrick I, love the, I love the speed. I mean, look, just really that's maybe what, five minutes maybe or six minutes or whatever, but look at what you've captured just in those, the quality of line, really, really well done. Well, great, thanks. So I'm glad it's working out. So I'm gonna be using, uh, you can use a watercolor pan, really, right? You can you can you can use one of these here. As you see, the color ones they're just a watercolor pan, and any color will do. Obviously, a dark color will be better because you have more tonal range. Um, rather than using a watercolor, I'm using this. Used to be like a big jumbo stick of graphite, and it's water soluble. If I put what it in water, it will start melting and gives me this dirty soup of. Uh, a particular you know graphite suspension so that's what i use uh, for painting um, and uh, especially for a quick painting like in this case here i'll just put it uh, this is by the way my portable palette that i use uh, when i'm going um, painting elsewhere so why not use it uh, that would be that that would be exactly what i would be using when i'm when i'm going out the water I have in here is from the last session, so it's still dark because it's been used before. Let's hope, hopefully, hopefully I only used it for graphite. Well, yeah, it uh, looks like it's just gray. It doesn't have any other colors in it, so that's good. And I'll just use some of this uh, this graphite tool to put on some uh, some values here on that. And, uh, and this is the decision moment here. What do I do with the sky? I'm not sure yet. I might end up uh, maybe putting the sky to the very last moment and make a decision then. But I'm, it's more important for me to do the rest of the buildings. So let's assume that we have a light coming from the left side, which is where my lamp is. And uh, everything here uh, will be painted proportionately to that light direction. So I'll have here a very light entry on this side of, uh, of the building. And then I'll have a light color here on the a large light value on, the, on this face of the tower. And I'm leaving some spaces here, some whites to come through. Um, so it looks less dead and then this side here seems to be very, very light. And you can layer it through and of course add more, more paint and more color according to what your wishes are. 
Uh, I have to put something underneath my my pad just so it 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 flows down. I like to be a little bit angled when I'm doing watercolors. Of course, you might not like that at all. It's a personal preference, but that's just uh, how it works out for me best. And then I'll just bring it over to the areas of uh, my umbrellas. Now, again, this is just an, a, a, an exercise in values, nothing else. Uh, so I, I'm assuming that my windows will be light. There's some kind of a light reflection in them. Um, and then there's this funny roof type here that curves. So I'll just give it a, something like that. There's a, some kind of a sculpture. I'll have to come back to this later on and refine it. Uh, but I'm just, the underside of the umbrellas are gonna be dark. So we can try to paint that in, possibly with one stroke and then painting the gates, the other gate, that's gonna be dark. So I used it, to, this was covered up with, in ink before and now I'm gonna go with this uh, graphite or watercolor. It looks very dark, but of course when it dries up, it will lighten itself by about, I don't know, 10, 20%, maybe more. Uh, so it, you will start seeing some of the tones from underneath coming through eventually. It's, uh, it's gonna be a little bit uh, different than what you see here. There, and uh, let's capture it in, connect the shapes. And uh, I'll start working on a tree a little bit. Uh, the bottom of it is gonna be really aggressive and then the top, I'll just leave it white. It's all about finding contrast in between this particular element and the other elements around next to it. As long as you have contrast, you're good because the eye reads it as, uh, oh, it could be this or it could be that. Oh, maybe, maybe your eye doesn't see it the way that uh, I was intending it to paint. But as long as your eye sees it as something, I'm good. That's what I'm thinking. There, quick sketch. And of course, we need the major shape here. The, the biggest shape of, of value is this vertical, the, the right side of the tower. Uh, that's, that's really very dark. So prepare quite a bit of the dark value soup and just go on and paint it decisively. I find that the faster I go, the better it works out. But mm -hmm. again, you know, personal preference. Uh, I would suggest that you, rather than spending, you know, a lot of money on high-end equipment and supplies and stuff like that, um, you just uh, try to paint more, perhaps on cheaper cheaper paper, but that will that will give you um, a great return eventually, and that's that's my opinion. It's uh, it's just uh, something that uh, that uh, that that worked for me. Okay. Someone asked about your brush, Mary. Uh, I like the brushes that are uh, squirrels. I like the natural ones because they are very, very soft. But there's nothing wrong with a synthetic brush for watercolor, and I have some of them. This one happens to be an old style squirrel brush. Uh, but you know what, it, 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 again, it's a personal choice. Um, whatever works for me might definitely not work for you. Um, some people are averse to using uh, 
you know, equipment that comes uh, from uh, like animal hair or things like that. And I understand it. I just bought this long time ago and, uh, and it happens to be a, a brush that I, I quite like and I use. Uh, but I, I'm not brand specific. I'm not, uh, I'm not you know, tied up to a particular type of a, of a tool or a particular technique. Well, I guess a technique I like is this graphite thing. And I like my, my, my fountain pens, especially the ones with the bent nib that are called Fude. But that's, a, yeah, that's just a quirkiness. Um, all those things are not necessarily expensive at all. Like many of the fountain pens, you can buy them for well, $30 or less. You don't have to buy a Mont Blanc for 300. Uh, you can, especially for sketching. I think you can get by with something much less expensive. Eric, do you ever um, sketch, sketch with the water soluble um, graphite and then just use water? I tried that, but I found that it, so this would involve uh, like drawing with the graphite itself first, right? right. Like right. using it like a stick. I tried that uh, with uh, I think the current dash version of uh, of uh, their graphite, um, and it didn't come as well or as free as uh, this uh, this option of just using it same as a watercolor, but. It might work for you. I mean, it's. Uh, uh, I think I like this because it's relatively free, quick, and rather careless. Um, if I was to draw with a stick, I would probably be more um, controlled. And control is not something I'm going for these days. It just, uh, I find it boring when I do things that are very controlled. Um, happens often when I'm doing um, like some kind of, some kind of a commission, it might have happened to you guys too, when you're doing commission, you tighten up yourself quite extensively because you want mm -hmm. that to come out really the, your possible best, right? And uh, I don't think I had a commission lately that I was happy about. <laughs> I actually had a situation where I was drawing um, on the street of Toronto, summertime, and it was this beautiful single home in a dwelling in a very well-known neighborhood. So it's like a, you know, it's a, it's a posh neighborhood, but the people there are, were nice. And I was sitting on a sidewalk and it was all fine. And I did this, this sketch of this beautiful house, like really beautiful. And, uh, and one of the people passing by, and this is uh, Toronto this last summer, right? So it was during... Uh, during COVID already, one of the person passing by, she just stopped and started, you know, watching and and then talking. And it turns out that she was actually the owner of this house in the past years, and she was the one that did all the renovations. So uh, she expressed interest in purchasing the piece once it's done. And uh, I said, well, you know, you'll have to come back and see it because it's not finished yet. And I don't know whether you like it and blah, blah, you know, you got to be. So I just gave her my phone number and uh, figured, ah, she'll probably never call me because that's how typically those things are. Everybody wants to buy something, but then they'll never really call back, right? I'm sure you have your own stories on that. Um, <laughs> so, okay. She, she walked away and uh, not even 20 minutes later, there's some movement at the house uh, and uh, you know, the owners, the current owners show up. And of course they are interested to see what am I doing. Uh, I don't think they are concerned. They're just interested because it's rather obvious. I'm sitting on the sidewalk, not moving with a one by two foot piece of paper on my lap. So what can I possibly <laughs> be doing? I'm drawing. Up to no good. You're definitely up to no good. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> that's what you would say, Chris. <laughs> but uh, so, so they, they, the, 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 the lady from the, of the house, the current owner, comes out and she just absolutely falls in love with the sketch, which at that time was uh, was pretty much finished. And she says to me, "Well, I have to buy it." I said, "No problem. You know, we established a price." Uh, I was good for her, it was good for me, all happy. 
you know, she went home with her painting and uh, I went home with some money and I had a nice lunch that day. Um, <laughs> and then about, about two or three days later, I get, I get a phone call from the past owner and saying, well, I, I want to, you know, can I see the final drawing? I said, well, you could, but actually I don't have it. It's no longer with me. And I tell her what happened, really. I tell, tell her that, you know, look, the, the, the current owner came out. I really could not say no, because now, well, first of all, I wasn't sure whether you'll come back, but really she was nice and it's her house. So it's, she wants to have it. I could not say no to her, but I can go back and paint another one for you. Okay, so I did. And next weekend, I went back to the same location, sat pretty much in the same spot and did another version of this, uh, the same house. And what happens again? Well, the current owner comes out and says, what are <laughs> you doing here again? <laughs> so then I tell her, oh, you know what? The, well, one of the people that passed by last week was the previous owner of the house. And uh, actually it turns out it was the, 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 the owner that the current person, the current lady bought it from the previous one. So they knew each other, but they lost track of each other because you know how it is. You buy something from someone else and uh, you just know their name, but you don't, you're not really buddies. And guess what? They actually reconnected based on this. Uh, they, they reconnected, the two wow. ladies reconnected, uh, you know, they, because they wanted to, to have, uh, uh, you know, something, I, I guess, chat about whatever else they wanted to chat. So they reconnected, which was a great thing. And the, 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 the past owner of the house, it turns out that she had another property in the same area. And now she has a third property in the same area. So she wanted me to paint all three of them. And I did, of well, course. And that, that was a good commission. But uh, again, um, commissions I find that are harder because I tense. I tend not to do yep. stuff the free way that, uh, that I'm doing now while, while chatting with you guys. Well, it's mostly me yapping. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how things are. Okay, so we are here um, adding up the final touches. I'll put on a couple of shadows here from the people, from the folks and the dog and whatever else. And, uh, you know, a quick sketch. I could add a little bit of a hint of a, of a sky to that, uh, maybe. Uh, but it'll have to be really, really faint and probably really dry. So I'll dry my brush and see how that works here if I just go. And just try to do a little hint of that. Obviously, if we had any clouds, uh, yeah, that's too wet. Very nice. Yeah, there you go. So that's that's just some some clouds. A couple of birdies, they always add up a little bit of, uh, of life to, to, any, to any view uh, using the point of, the, of my brush. And you know, now you can go on and, uh, and finish it. But the, the bottom line here of this entire you know, exercise is it's possible to draw something in, I don't know, I, I have no idea how much time I spent, probably less than half an hour, I'm guessing but uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. And come to a, to a point where you might be happy enough with, uh, with what you currently have uh, and say, okay, yeah, that's good enough. You know, that's, uh, that, that wasn't a good, a good stroke. Now, I'm, see, now I'm starting to mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's always difficult to know when to stop. Every sketch, it's difficult yeah, to well, know I should to have, stop. Yeah, well, I should have stopped before I put, yeah. I should have stopped before I put this this thing down here, but uh, didn't happen. Okay, there. Okay. Call it done, and a quick sketch in uh, excellent uh, in just right. quick mode. You know, it's uh, that's all. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Are there any excellent. questions? That's Is there something that you guys want me to talk about specifically? I'm happy to to answer. Give you my point of view. 
that was very, very helpful for me to see the different shadows and the different values and the way you did that, because I struggle with this. So this was really wonderful. Thank you so much. I learned a lot today. Oh, that's great. You know, it's a, I find, see, you, you must be a painter because I actually <laughs> get confused with colors. So for me, doing one, it's much easier than do 20 of them. It's, uh, and uh, that, is, uh, that is my, I do this because I'm effectively, you know, out of my own laziness. I, I, I know I will get a better, uh, better result. Um, and that's, uh, I find, I find this is easy to me, but that's just, I, I'm sort of uh, working in black and white. It's um, wonderful. Yeah, so I think we have a question that something is popping up on my, on my screen. Was there a question that someone has typed in? Yes. Yeah, Merrick, it says, do you ever use water soluble ink in your Fuda pen to also use as a wash for shadows? Uh, that is something that uh, a lot of urban sketchers do. I don't do that often. I do that occasionally. I have some some inks that are not waterproof, so they will actually bleed uh, when when you when you touch it. And I guess mm. we can. Uh, I guess we can try to do that here on on, on another piece of paper. But absolutely possible. Yes. So let's uh, let's pull another another. I, I don't know how much time we have more, Chris. Here, what what's what's our timing? You know, you know that's up to you, uh, Merrick. It's it's about nine fifteen, almost nine fifteen. So you you've been going at it for a while, but uh, you know it, it, everybody seems to be hanging in there. But uh, okay, you know we'll leave it up to you. Okay. Well, let I'll, let me just build up on the last on the last uh, uh, question. I believe that this this pen I have here, I think it has a water soluble. Yeah, that looks like a blue. So we can do we can do the trick that the the, the person asked about. This is another another pen with a bent nib. So this is going to be a quick sketch of something. I don't know. I'll just go on with the. Uh, Horizontally, vertically, how should I go? Uh, okay, this way. I'll go this You're way. Good, we'll right? do, um, okay, I'll just do. Uh, let Let's let this thing prime because it hasn't been used for a while. So hopefully, hopefully, will work. Come on, maybe I'll dip it in water, and uh, and hopefully it will start going a little bit. Okay, it's definitely blue, so that's gonna be. So let's do here. Um, and I'm using watercolor paper now. Um, you might have seen me taking it out from uh, this block and flipping it to the to the other side, to the back side of the paper. That's simply because this particular block has a, a very rough uh, front face, and I'm not crazy about the, um, the, this particular, the, you know, the roughness of it. Sometimes it's a little bit too rough, so I use the back side and uh, without any problems really. And uh, let's do another sketch here. Uh, maybe build up something with some. Uh... All right, I have nothing in my mind. I'm just going, going at it as we go. All right, I really don't know. I haven't decided which way, which direction of light we might have. Um, I'll probably try to include some uh, trees down here. None, none of them are palm trees because I have a problem with that. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and here we go. We'll just we'll just put on some some values. There was a question here. Do I put values in uh, in, in ink? Absolutely, by all means. And uh, this see if this is okay. So this looks more like a uh, some kind of a I don't know. It will be like an arena or something like that. Maybe with an Oculus. So things are starting to establish themselves. Uh, maybe we're looking at some kind of a waterfront and there will be this large gap here. This is our area and there's some, um, yeah, like a, like a street that goes on. It could be Chicago, right, Hannah? Well, if, I, if it was Chicago, it would <laughs> yes, have the Yes, it L. could be. 
Yeah, if it, if it was Chicago, it would have the L here in the middle or something like that. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of a view that uh, that we we all sketched that from uh, during the Chicago workshops. There's a view of one of the streets there that uh, sort of you like just look along from one of the pedestrian bridges, not far from the location where the the Chicago workshop was. And of course, I did that drawing too. So now it reminds me of it. And um, and I'm just making up a bunch of different buildings of, and I'm trying to alter the values here. So I get a little bit like a, a piano effect. So there's a dark and light, dark and light, uh, they are um, alternating with itself, right? And, uh, and I'll put on some shadows here for sure to that and uh, have some diagonals. Diagonals help me establish the, the, the direction of the light. So I'll have that coming in here. And, uh, there's, uh, there's more. This is just an imagination sketch, of course, based on many other imagination sketches that I might have drawn before that are somehow similar to this. What Mary, I want to do, do you is get it. Out, uh, do, do you do ever wear what? out the tip? Um, yeah, do, do you, I'm sorry. Do you ever wear out the tips of your fountain pens on, on the rough paper? I, I never found this to be an issue. It might be, it might sound as it is scratchy, but this is the, the food, the bent nib, and it really glides over the roughness of the paper. Yeah. Uh, so it's, I don't think I have a problem with that. And even if it is, this pen is maybe $15 or something like that, it's a moon man. And, uh, but the, 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 the nib, it's made up by a Chinese company called Jing Hao. If anyone uh, is ever interested in fountain pens, I have a guide on, uh, on Instagram that shows you the, the pens that I use for sketching. Um, now, again, it's, uh, it's my, my choice, uh, my preference, and it's simply not, not because they are best, it's just because those are the ones that I happen to have, right? So, uh, but since I always get asked about the, which pen is it that I'm using, then I just put together a little guide. And there's, there's a link uh, that will work. You don't have to have Instagram for it. You can just, uh, you can just ask, I guess you, I can send it to Hannah and she could forward it to anybody that's interested. Uh, uh, or if you have Instagram, you can find it uh, on, uh, uh, on, my, on my wall, is it called, or feed, whatever the term. Yeah, we'll have uh, we'll have Anna post your your Instagram site too, Merrick. So so people who want to who want to start following you can. Well, yeah, it's, everything is there for me. I, I pretty much moved to Instagram only at this point, so uh, you can find me there all the time. And uh, uh, yeah, if you have any more questions, feel free to send me a, a message or a direct message, whatever else. So post to to whatever you can find. I'm quite happy to, I'll try to always try to answer. Okay, so uh, everything is fine here. This side, this side though looks a little bit out of scale. So I'm not really sure what to do with it. And I'm not sure since, if I'm not sure, I'll give it, I'll give it maybe a building here in the back. Yeah, maybe that. Okay, let's, let's make it, let's make it more Chicago-ish here. Here, here, that's a, uh, <laughs> Something like that, yeah, with, with another tower here on top. Okay, hopefully that, that's good enough. And now, and now I, need, I need a base. I definitely need a base. There's a couple of uh, cars, trucks, uh, what have you. Something happening here at the bottom that uh, needs to be drawn in. Uh, just so there's more interest here towards, uh, especially in this area the, where I'm bridging it together. Uh, there might be like a, a beach area or something like that, because this is turning into a, into a Chicago waterfront. Even though, of course, it's not Chicago. Just a quick doodle. Okay. Um, Everything fine, but this face here, it's too light. I need to have this uh, darkened up 
in value, otherwise it won't hold. Um, I'm having a, a situation where a lot of things are happening, dark light, dark light, dark light, and so on and so forth, but I have no differentiation in between those two. So um, one way I can go around it is to bring, stick out another building here from the back and just narrow it down to that. And that's one, one option. That's probably a better option would be to just uh, turn it into a, a gray altogether. Okay, well, let's do that now. Um, since um, I used a uh, water soluble ink, this is a KWZ, KWZ as they call it, um, ink. Um, put away the pen, bring out my my brush. I can use the same one that I use for graphite. It really doesn't matter. Uh, actually, I'll probably change it just so I can have more of a of a water in it. Um, there. Another type of a, I mean, it's the same. This is called quill or mop. I'm not sure what the difference in between the two is. But it's just yet another, yet another brush, and it had some blue on it, so that's great, perfect. Okay, so let's go and uh, start spreading some colors here, and uh, this should run. There you go. So hopefully now you can see it better when it's starting to run, and I'm trying to bring additional interest here, and I'll use some of those shapes to be. Uh, their own unique value. That's such a great technique. Yeah, well, thank you for to whoever asked me you know, about that because it's uh, it's a it's a very easy technique, I would think. Um, if you have no difficulties in thinking in monotone, right? Because someone else mentioned that it's difficult for her to do things in uh, in in just this one value that type of. But I, I, I look to me, doing the, the the full color painting is way more difficult than this. So to each <laughs> their own, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I really don't know. Yeah. Okay. Boom. There you go. Quick moves, just one flick with the brush. Um, I can't really spend more than that. I'll have one quick one here. I want that to be a dark building. And uh, need to put something here to the top. So you can see how this is now building up. And then we'll decide about, yeah, I'm still not happy about this, how this turned out. It's just, uh, it's a little bit of a mess, but I guess I got to live with it. There. Hmm. Hmm. So much life and personality just with the quick strokes. It's, it's really fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. The quickness here, it's uh, it's required. I think. I think it's uh, it's something that is required. Uh, it's and you got to go only once on it. If you start doodling many times, like you're gonna lose the the freshness of that. Um, and mm -hmm. that freshness is some, certainly something that the the urban sketchers are uh, quite fond of because. I don't, I don't think you do much uh, of, a, of a laborious work in, while you're sketching. At least I don't, you know, it's not my, it's not, it's not what my preference is. I just like to draw. So I'm quite happy doing this. I'm, I'm literally happy I can talk to you guys uh, while we are 
a painting. So that's uh, that makes me but, happy here. And that, that's really what's so it. so good. Uh, no, go go ahead, Lisa. I really love this with one color. I I'm going to really adopt adopt this because I hate using a bunch of colors. To me, it it I never can get it right. I just I really love what you're doing there. It, it has so much life, and I and I can see where you can get the light in the dark, and it's all the same color, but it feels like so much more. I love it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, great. Yeah, I'm glad it's. it's uh, it well, thank you to whoever asked for it, you know, because it's uh, I Love didn't it. think about it, and it's been a while since I actually used this technique. But uh, yeah, there you go. It's uh, it's all doable, except this thing here is no good. But so I'm just <laughs> looking at it, and uh, and it's this is no good. I have to I have to still do something about the that piece because it's just uh, I don't I don't know what, but I'm just not happy. At least uh, you know maybe. Uh, uh, maybe I'll turn it into a vertical here and I'll entirely there. Yeah, that's uh, I just need to tie it up to something. It's just not, it's not satisfying me. It's not very Chicago-ish, but I guess I will have to do that. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. It's it looks more like a yeah. I don't know what it looks like, but it's it looks different. I'm I'm happier with this side, the right side, than the left side. The left side is uh, just not necessarily the best. Oh, maybe we'll just turn it off entirely. Here, there. See how that works. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Enough. See that. That's the point where, that's, as Chris said, you know, you've got to know where is the enough point, and this is the enough point. Uh, when I don't know what to do, I try. I tend to just leave it and uh, don't come back to it. Uh, you know, I mean, call it off, done. And I will just put on a little bit of a of a. Wash you know, that's for... one of the beauties. One of the beauties, Merrick, of urban sketching is that you know you can you can express it so quickly. All of us as artists, we want to sit over our paintings for hours and hours, and you know the, this is so expressive in just so little time. Yet you've got the feel of the scene, you've got the the intensity through tones. It's really well done, and that's that's what urban sketching is all about. And that's what this this group of artists. There's such a talented group of multi uh, medium uh, artists and to watch a, a, a quick uh, illustrative expressive technique is is really something different and fun to see well great I'm glad this is uh, this is of interest to, to you guys uh, that's uh, it's uh, I thank you for suggesting you know to bring this uh, technique back up because it's uh, yeah it's one of the possibilities as and I'm sure you'll find your own. Yeah. What other questions? Uh, any Any other questions from Eric? We've We've about worn him out. It's We've gone about an hour and a half, and and I know it's a, it's a school night for most of us. So I want to be uh, I want to be cognizant of time, but I do want to give everybody an opportunity to ask a question or or comment, if you will. Uh, go ahead. I've got a question about when you sketch out in your car. Do you just put your pad on the steering wheel and pull your chair back, or do you have a particular setup? No, I put the, I put I have a I have a minivan, so it's relatively large, but also uh, I sketch on my one by two foot uh, uh, sheets quite often, and I just put it on my steering wheel, and that works out. Of course, after you move your chair back as much as as possible. I guess I could possibly move into the passenger chair, but we are so used to our driver's position anyway, right? Yeah. So the, the steering wheel, I think it's uh, it comes in handy. I have no problem with it. Well, I'm really surprised that you can you can work with that large in the car. I have trouble <laughs> just doing a nine, a nine by 12. I need elbow room. <laughs> well, okay. Well, I, 
I, I don't know what to tell you. I only, I, I, well, sometimes I do the graphite thing, but I miss mostly sketch on location. So it's, it's mostly for me, it's mostly uh, just ink lines. And, uh, and it, on a pad like this, I mean, nine by 12, yeah, I think it's doable. So I'm sure you'll find a way. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll get there <laughs> just with practice. <laughs> Thank you. Your uh, demonstration, this last one especially, was really amazing. And you could, you were saying what you were thinking, and we were watching it materialize. It was really cool. I appreciate it. Well, that's great. Yeah, I appreciate that. And yeah, I find it that it comes out better when I I loudly say what goes through my through my head because it, it's just visual, right? I'm just responding to the same visual that you are seeing. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, uh, might be interesting of the process of creation, but also the process of thinking about this creation. But oh, hopefully that is interesting to you. So it's not yeah, only interesting; it's very helpful. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, yeah, I'm I'm hoping it's helpful because the whole point here of of, of me you know stopping by Jacksonville today was to uh, just show you how other folks you know can do things and maybe some of it will it will appeal to you. But like it seems that uh, you know some folks are interested now in uh, using um, water soluble ink in a fountain pen. Which, by the way, most of the fountain pens that you buy that have cartridges in them, those are the very mm -hmm. cheap fountain pens. You can buy some for like less than what cost you, than what less than a coffee at Starbucks would cost. You, <laughs> you can buy a fountain pen for two or three dollars now, and they come with those cartridges, and those cartridges are always water soluble, mm -hmm. uh, and that's a, a great start uh, to to go and, um, and then you can you know, take it off from that. But this really um, was, uh, yeah, it's just some kind of a blue. It's a fancy blue that it separates into two different colors. I um, don't know how that is visible much, but there are some areas here that are more cyan or um, like, I don't know. Yeah, I guess it's cyan. And then there's some other areas that are more on the reddish side. But I guess that's just the, the typical chemistry of this particular ink. I don't know if it's visible awesome. or not. Awesome. Yeah, that's a great, that's a, that's an outstanding sketch, Mary. It's, that's it's very nice. cool. Yeah, well, it's just, uh, it's just something. Well, thank you all. But th that's, yeah. that was the, the, the goal of the night was uh, to, to have you look at other options. So maybe something will inspire you. If, uh, if I see, if I, if I, when I come by and pass into, you know, by Jacksonville going down to Florida, I'll, I'll be on the lookout for people on the street sketching out with this particular technique. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, Mary, good. I want to. I want to make sure if there's any other questions, please, <laughs> please holler out. Um, but, but I, I did want to take this time to personally thank you. I'm going to turn it over to Lisa, and she can wrap it up. But I want to. I want to just thank you for the time. Uh, it's a lot of time, and and really. To share your talent is is again what I said earlier. That's what that's what was so attractive about you know having you um, uh, join us this evening, uh, and and it gives us the ability to learn from one of the best. So you know, thank you for that time. I want to personally thank you for the time. Yes, I do owe you at least one bottle of wine, uh, <laughs> so I will have to get your address, and we'll we'll make that happen. Uh, but uh, on on behalf of of our chapter, certainly thank you. Man, it was fun. It's always a blast, and we'll see you soon. So, Lisa, I'll turn it over to you to to wrap up. And and Merrick, again, really, really appreciate the time, bud. Merrick, thanks. So, thank you so much. I really enjoy meeting you, and um, your techniques. And I've I've learned so much, and I think we all have learned so much. Thank you all for coming, and I hope. You were insp as inspired as I have been through this whole thing. You've inspired us all to really get out there and draw and sketch a lot more. As we can see, it doesn't happen over one or two sketches. It happens over thousands of sketches. Am I right on that one? Well, yes. it's, 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 yeah, you, you, need to, you need to put some time into it. But you see here that at the end of the day, this is like the third drawing with it. 
together, right? Because we did, I don't know, was it, is this the first one or some other one? But we did three different three things today during our hour and a half, right? So it's possible to sketch a lot. Uh, yes. And uh, some of it might be opening up new avenues for you. That's all. Yeah. That's thank the plan. You. Thank you. So, well, I thank you guys for the invitation. It's been wonderful. Uh, all the best uh, to the, you know, USK chapter in Jacksonville and looking forward to that big bottle of wine that Chris is having for me. <laughs> you need to come down and uh, learn to paint um, palm trees with us. <laughs> yeah, we're, okay. we're going to have them down here. Eric, we're, you've got an open invitation to come down and join our chapter and lead us on a sketch crawl. We'd love to love to have you. Okay. Uh, uh, if I do pass by, the, I'll certainly be drawing out there and you guys will know about it. So thank you very much. Thank you all. Yes. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you, thank you. Thank thank you everyone. Bye. Wonderful. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks, Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all.